Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we are exploring the new JASP version. Yeah, that's right, another JASP version has dropped. JASP 0.19. In here, you can see I have the Intel Mac version. L a little bit of a change to this intro screen, and also one thing that I didn't get a chance to record, but JASP can now, at least for Macs, be uh, changed, a setting, to allow it to automatically check for updates, right? So sometimes in previous versions, there was a line here that said, hey, click here, there's a new Jasp version available. You don't have to do that now. You can go into the preferences and, um, and check for updates and this box is checked. So when you first install 0 0.19, it will ask you, do you want Jasp to check for updates? And you have yes or a no. So I didn't, that, that dialog box, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to record because I was like, wait, what? Um, but, it says at the bottom of the dialog before you hit, you know, select yes or no, that you can make those changes in your settings. And that's where we are, although it's technically preferences, right? <laughs> so yeah, you uncheck this if you don't want it to ping uh, JASP servers uh, for automatic updates. If you want to just do that yourself, um, not automatic updates, uh, excuse me, automatic checks. I think you still have to do the update on your own, right? It's all it's it's always going to be uh, user updating, right? Just to see if you are either running in uh uh, into known issues, right? And so it's going to ping the servers for that and also the update. So I'm going to have that checked. That's an amazing step in uh, these free and open source programs because the technology is getting better for these apps to ping a uh, server once a day and see whether or not there's changes. And of course, we're going to go over all of the changes and fixes in this. And you're going to see in the release notes that there are a lot of known issues that the JASP team and devs attempt to fix on a daily basis, but then also suggestions for new things, which I think is amazing. A couple of other changes to the splash screen. We we've had the, fa the free, friendly, and flexible for a while. Uh, since uh, 0.17, I think they've had the uh, support and the JASP community here where they they just cycle through all of their big institutional supports right so both european and um uh, american supports but we've got a direct link right here to report bugs and it's at the edge of the screen and then a direct link to request features so if i click on report bugs it's going to open up this window that i have and it wants me to sign into to github and you have to have an account to report a bug and that's fine um if we go back to the screen and we request features it's going to open up github again let me let me just log let me just log in so when you click on report bugs it'll bring you up to the bug page okay and then when you click on request features, it'll bring up the new feature request. Both are on GitHub. You do need a website to uh, a website. You do need an, a login to uh, do a bug report or a feature request just because, you know, they don't want randos and anons to, to be doing it. I mean, it's it's whatever, right? You just have to have a, a, an account. And if you're like me and are active with the community, then these are things that you'll be likely to do, right? And, and this is what JASP, the JASP team needs you to do, of course. Over here, you have ask a question and visit the website. So visit the website takes you to jaspstats.org. And we've got this right here. And we'll talk about these new features in a second. Um, and then ask a question, which is their forum on um, cogsci.nl. So forum.cogsci.nl. So this is the cognitive science uh, run by Sebastian Matho. I'm not entirely sure where exactly this website at cogsci.nl. Um, obviously, the Netherlands, of course. Uh, so maybe a uh, site over there. You do need to sign in or register. I am not a member of this forum, so um, I have not. But this is where you can just ask a question in case you are at the... Um, uh, at, a, at a, I don't know, standstill uh, for what to do in JASP. You can come over here and, and talk about it. Uh, now, there'll be uh, ones where they have no replies and you'll see be the first to reply, comments, whatever, and you can go through and see if your question's been answered. Lots of pages of stuff. And so there is a search function here and you can enter in and include forum posts. And there you go. Uh, apparently it is Sigmund AI. Okay, all right. Well, so those are the new changes to the splash screen. Let's go to the... Uh, release notes and talk about the changes for this pack. And then we'll go through some of these changes in the actual app, right? Because I want to show the whoop, went too far. Rain cloud plots. I love it. Yes, this is amazing. Um, so we're going to look at rain cloud plots in this in this video. Uh, I'm not a Bayesian st statistician if you are a uh, person who frequents my channel. Um, and but they have added the Bayesian aspects of process. So mediation and moderation, complex mediation, complex moderation from a Bayesian perspective, which I think is awesome. So that is complementing the frequentist process that came in 0 0.18.2, uh, right? Um, still in a beta. So I imagine the Bayesian process analysis is also um, in in kind of like the new beginnings. Uh, it doesn't say beta, so I'm hesitant to, to call it beta. I'm not a, a Jazz dev, so, you know, that, that kind of thing. Data type check improvements, right? So the data type is when you um, have a data set and it's continuous, it's ordinal, it's nominal. Generally speaking, it's those three, right? And continuous generally goes with interval or ratio scale, right? So we'll talk about some of those changes here. Jazz, uh, the devs put together uh, a few GIFs to um, explain how to do this. And then data uh, editing is also getting a little bit more robust. They make incremental changes every time. It's pretty good, right? Right? It, it's getting there. It 
it's uh, it's a slow process. What do users want in the data editor? And the data editor is relatively new. So, you know, they're working through it and they've got a label editor. They've got recoding now, which is awesome. Reordering per value and um, uh, values in gray if they diff differ from the labels. New language, Italian. Gotta love somebody jumping in there and, and providing some translations for Italian. Uh, common, common language in the stats arena. Uh, welcome page. We just did that one. Uh, the import data, so better handling of ODS files. These were bug reports and read missing uh, values a little bit better from SAV files, which is SPSS and read sat. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but of course, bug. Uh, improving the LaTeX editor. I don't use LaTeX, so there you go. Uh, table title gets APA styles. Uh, this is pretty cool, and I want to see what this looks like. So we're going to try to generate some tables if we can. Um, Modules fixed and new features. And as you can see, the list is huge, right? The, this list is huge. Pretty much every major module got, got a fix in this. And as you can see, every single one has a link to a, either a bug report or a feature request. Okay, so, you know, let's go through this. Some of these I'm going to go quickly over because I'm not familiar, like, with auditor, uh, auditing or whatever. The improving the Shapiro Vilt test. That's also also awesome. It's a good way to test the normality of your distribution and then added the bounds of percentiles. You can explore this in the descriptives. Maybe we'll do descriptives uh, in this video. Uh, definitely rain cloud plots. Maybe we'll look uh, at to see if that's the case. ANOVA, multivariate default for follow-up tests in repeated measures. Excellent. Uh, absolutely necessary for repeated measures ANOVAs because of the way repeated measures ANOVAs work with uh, the repeated, specifically the repeated measures factors. Letter-based post hoc grouping, a done relocating, and singular models. Excellent. Contrast-specific error terms, if you're doing planned contrasts. Letter-based representation of all pairwise comparisons. So the reason why they're doing this letter-based stuff is to make it easily more easily readable and finding out which one is which. So you have a, a legend, a key for each letter, and you can go, especially if you have a ton of levels or conditions per factor, and you're like, oh, i got to do this huge list of post hoc comparisons. The previous tables were a little unwieldy in, in the way that they did the this, this level minus this other level, and then uh, the next row would be the that first level, level A, and then to B, and then to C, and then to D, and then there would be another row for B to C to D, and then so on and so forth. So these tables would be massive, and that's really difficult to read when you've got a lot of stuff. So that's awesome. Uh, incorrect uh, uh, confidence interval bars for RM and Nova for both frequentist and Bayesian were fixed. Uh, effect size for Kruskal Wallace and uh, the Dunn's tests were added, which are postdoc tests. Confidence interval error, error bars are were too small. Maury's correction be optional. So they fixed that. I'm wondering if those two bullet points are the same. They left the question mark in here. <laughs> Repeated measures of Nova. It looks like a lot of RM stuff was fixed here. Uh, allow interactions uh, within between in marginal means. That's a great addition because it's obviously necessary. Dunn's post hoc non-functional, so they fixed that. Option to only compute and display relevant post hocs, right? So clicking through the ANOVA to do that. I don't know if I'll do another ANOVA video with these updates because these are minor post hoc fixes. Maybe I'll do a separate, hey, what post hocs can you do in ANOVA? More on that later, I suppose. Presenting the results uh, for n factorial ANOVAs, fixing factors. Okay, so just more fixing. Error in uh, homogeneity test for RM ANOVA, and then RM uh, can plot interactions. So those things were fixed. Awesome. T-test. Uh, niggling plot differences. I don't know what this is. Niggling, niggling plot. Interesting. But they fixed it for both frequentist and uh, Bayesian paired t-test. Confidence were fixed. Confidence intervals for Wilcoxon were fixed. Abbreviated man whitney U statistics. I guess wordy. Um, the Wilcoxon test won't run with ordinal data, but with scale, so I assume they fixed that. Mixed model fixed, so I'm going to jump over that. Process fixed, so remember, process is uh, in beta, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm assuming that it is still titled with beta. And let's see if we take a look over here. Let's see, process... Uh, yeah, it's still labeled with beta right here, so we're still making changes to it, right? So this, I would imagine, is for the frequentist rather than the Bayesian. Uh, one, but I guess Bayesian process model estimated with failed um, Levon things. Levon things, okay. Well, there's a link to something there. Bootstrap percentile intervals, fix those. Fix short variable names, added covariance. That's for mediators and mediator interaction terms. Hayes configuration, a little typo there. Hayes configuration was, I, I, got, I suppose, a model or two were failing when you use the Hayes configuration rather than the other option to just set your variables in various ways. And so model over failed, error, obviously. Fix that. Local tests not performing were fixed. Multiple mediated processes um, become one. Can't do that. You need to unbind them, right? And then renaming model erases input. That's a weird, that was a weird bug and they fixed that. Regression, fixed a bug where you couldn't add an ordinal variable to linear regression, fixed a base factor regression hypothesis value, error when interaction term was entered into the regression. I've encountered that bug before, uh, very awkward, right? Reintroducing stepwise forward, backward regression. That's great. I didn't know they removed it. But yeah, these are important um, ideas. But more importantly is the block function for hierarchical linear regression. This has been asked 
by users for years now and expect a video on this, a separate video on HLR. Now, this is not hierarchical linear modeling. This is a single dependent variable with a hierarchical. So I'm going to enter in one variable and see what happens to the model. Then I'm going to enter in another variable and see what happens to the model and so on and so forth. That's this HLR and expect that. In a, in a separate video. I am so excited for this. Uh, and as you can see, it's been this request has been around for a while. Um, I think either I I was a suggester on this one. Let me see. I'm so yes, there it is. That's me, guys. That's me. Amazing. <laughs> they did it. I'm here. Everyone, I made it. Oh, this was my feature request. And as you can see, September 19, 2018, it's been around for a while. I'm so excited. This is the first time a feature request has ever been made. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. I'm, that's so fun. Guys, I'm just now seeing this. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Well, this video was, my, it was definitely worth it. This video was definitely worth it. Holy crap. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Well, definitely expect a video on that for 100% sure. 100% definitely doing a video on that. I can't not, right, guys? I can't not. Oh, oh thank you for indulging me on that. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Additional statistics. Amazing. Hierarchical logistical regression entering predictors in blocks. So not only do we get it for linear regression, but we get it for logistic regression. Expect a video on that one as well. Probably later uh, in my flow of video recording um, in my in my, you know, list of, of videos to record. Right. Error uh, fix when running a moderator and then linear waiting to uh, for Cohen's Kappa. Right. Reliability adding McDonald's Omega or fixing McDonald's Omega factor. Uh, this is the factor analysis module. Right. So exporting for EFA and PCA factor scores. So save would put them into your uh, existing data file, I believe. Uh, so the actual loadings uh, will put them in your existing. I, I have to check on that one. But exporting, I think, would put them into a new data file. CFA error was fixed when you did a grouping variable and unidimensional omega was fixed in the CFA uh, function. Jags, I don't know too much about Jags or audit, so we're skipping that. I uh, don't know about much about machine learning, but they fixed some bugs and added some things. That's great. SEM, uh, fixing the, their no negative correlation error message when, uh, when trying to perform LGCM. Uh, SEM mislabeling models. I've run into that bug before. Latent growth modeling gets an error. Yeah, so there's just a bunch of bug fixing to SEM. Uh, looks like bug fixing to visual modeling, which has been around for a while, you know. And so fixing that, really important. O uh, only allowing two variables in the input boxes. That's part of it, right? Uh, repair independent samples a t-test for the equivalence t-test. This is a separate module to the regular t-test module. Learn Bayes, binary classification. Ah, they fixed a... Um, bug with accepting continuous and binary discrete variables, and they fixed the F distribution error in the distribution model. Ah, yes, a module, excuse me. Uh, the distribution module is, is making modules based on inputs, parameter inputs, and so it looks like the F distribution had an error that they were fixing, although there's not a lot of, you have to click on the 2640 there to find out what that was. And then the QC module got some fixes as well. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this update. It really does change the landscape of JASP and Jamovi. I'm excited to see where this goes. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I did say we were going to do a um, rain cloud plot. So let's open up some data. No, that's preferences. Open data library. Uh, let's open up some descriptives. Yeah, sure. Fine. Let's open up sleep. Let's do that. All right, cool. Um, these are the violin plots. Okay, so let's get rain cloud plots in here. Let's, let's add some rain cloud plots. Hell yeah. Uh, let's add extra as our DV. And there you go. Rain cloud plots. Why is this called a rain cloud plot? Well, it's, it's a jitter plot. Okay, where we've got the scatter here uh, on our, and usually the variable gets put on the Y axis. And so you've got all of the dots here, all of the individual pieces of information. You've got a box and whisker plot, okay, which is we've got the median here, we've got our quartiles, we've got the inner 25% here, a median is the 50th percentile, right? So box and whisker plot. And then here is the distribution. So that's why it's called a rain cloud plot, because if you turn your head to the side, you've got the cloud, that's what this is, and little raindrops, which are the little dots, right? So yeah, that's how you do it. And you can, um, do several different things here, right? So you can put a primary factor as our group and you can divide it by group and we'll get two. Um, and the rain clouds are put in the various places. Of course, end to end is where you'll find your density distribution. And so they won't be in line if they're not actually in line, right? So we've got group one and two, and there you go. We can change our plot coloring here to uh, colorblind, okay? Or ggplot2 or anything like that. Look at that, it's very pretty. Um, these are our typical colors, right? Uh, and you can apply it to color palette or not. Right. So there you go. And we can sh show a legend, which is great, which is unnecessary. If you've got the Y axis down there, you can make them horizontal. So they do look like actual rain clouds. Oh, let's get up the legend. So it's yeah, there we go. Very pretty. Um, and group one and group two. So you can do it horizontally or vertically. And then you can get the table with the box statistics. Right. And the box statistics are either shown or not shown. 
Um, obviously, the box statistics are the box and whisker statistics. So we've got the 25th, median, 75th, and upper, right? Cloud elements. What do we want? Well, the violin is what is considered the density show box. That's the box and whisker and then show points. So you can have just the violin um, without the points. You can just do these two. The graph does not change, though. That's what you need to recognize here. So the graph does not change. Show box. Come on now. You can do a computer. There you go. Just the box and whisker. or And then you can change all of these various things it's 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 pretty cool you can also change the color palette to different outlines right black or not okay so i can get rid of the outline and it'll just it'll look a little cleaner right color palette none on the box and whisker although <laughs> outline gets rid of the uh, whiskers themselves which is obviously important um or you can have them black Opis op op opacity excuse me or and you can also have jitter just in case some values overlap they won't if you have jitter smoothing 100 percent, or we can take this down to 10 percent and click off of it and it'll be a little more janky, a little individual density curves. Of course, we don't want that when we're doing a rain cloud plot. It would be a little, little ridiculous in a rain cloud plot, I suppose, right? And you can change opacity and everything like that. So cloud elements are amazing. Axes, you can modify what your axes are. Captions would be the uh, what the dots and information means, right? So points are slightly jittered from their true values, okay? Um, that That's captioned there. Custom limits for dependent variable, we can change that as well. So if we change that to 1,000, everything is all smushed. And then plot size, you can change the height or the, the width. So let's go 600 by 600. Let's, let's see what that looks like. There we go, much better, right? The one thing you can't change when you make these uh, plots is where the lines show up, which is unfortunately a little obnoxious. Um, so these are not technically fully APA, but maybe you can make some changes in an editing program. Even PowerPoint can help you do that. Um, and then you can e export those values. We can add some additional uh, advanced options here. We can add the mean to show us where the mean is. That's represented by a uh, diamond shape. Okay, usually in a box and whisker plot, that's how it is. Um, you can put the value in a custom position, nudge it over one. Um, you can put the axis on there. You can change the size of the mean too. And then you can connect the means with lines. I'm not gonna go through all of those. You can play around with whatever it is that you'd like. You can put the interval around the mean as well, and that'll get rid of the box and whisker plot. And it will put in the confidence interval around the mean rather than the box and whisker plot. So the confidence interval around the mean rather than the percentiles. And the interesting thing is it'll add that over here to your statistics. You don't actually have to have the confidence interval. You can put the standard error. These are mutually exclusive. So you can either have the interval around the mean as precision or as confidence, right? So there you go. And interval line width uh, is the width of the line itself. Right? Maybe you can go b below one. Let's see if you can do 0.5. Yeah, you can. You can make it thinner. Okay. And if adding the interval around the mean um, adds in a caption. So you can show that or not. Custom cloud orientation. So this is all ggplot2 stuff. And um, you can change the language or in, in the code itself, right? If we go up here, this is all this is all like rain cloud uh, ggplot stuff. And so if we change this information in here, 00AE96, um, all of these right here is represented by this information, right? ABC are our clouds, right? RRR is our orientation because I made it this. If we change that to horizontal plot, we get rid of that. Make it the, uh, oh, it didn't change that. Orientation RRR, oh, interesting, okay. I guess I could be incorrect about that list RRR. I'm not entirely sure where that RRR is. But anyways, these are the code boxes that you can manage. And of course, if you need help, you can click on the eyes to get more. I guess it's just a tooltip. You have hover over it. Okay. Specify a hex code. Custom orientation. L or R. Yeah. So if we change this to L, it's L, L, L. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know what happened there. Oh, apply custom orientation. That's going to, there we go. Got to click, click the box. Still, still can't change it. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here, but that's all right. Anyways, if you read over it, if you, it says, per default, all violins are right of the boxes. To customize this, specify L or R for each cloud. Apply the custom orientation sets. Point nudge to zero. Zero. Yeah, it says, yeah, custom orientation. Point nudge set to zero. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why an L isn't. I can't type in anything there. Huh. I might be doing something wrong. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, all right. So that, that, was rain, that was the one thing that I wanted to include in this video is rain cloud plots because they're fun, right? I'm not going to do a separate video on rain, rain cloud plots. They're, they're a fun plot. Uh, and you're going to see them more often now, too, uh, with this functionality, because they're a great way to show. Um, oh, look at that. Uh, the nudge went down to zero here. So we've got the mean in all of them. But it doesn't. Yeah, there's an issue here with uh, the custom orientation. That's a bit of a bummer. I wish this went out, by the way. This is it's kind of ridiculous. In any case, that is all of the new changes in 0 0.19. That is rain cloud plots. My suggestion finally got in to the app. and I'm super happy about that. Expect a, a video on that in the near future. Thanks so much for watching this video. Leave your comments, suggestions, or other uh, questions down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.